Hello everybody, welcome back to Course Design HQ, and welcome to the first episode of uh, a little design series um, called Sightlines Framing and More, where we're going to be talking about um, some quick tips um, to improve your sightlines, improve your framing, and and everything else that we talk about in this uh, in this series. So, um, first off, I just want to say this is not a tutorial series. I'm not going to be creating sightlines in the game. I'm actually going to be using screenshots. Um, of other people's courses as well as my own to highlight certain parts that are good parts that are that could um, that, that need work and then uh, you know using those examples to to help show you um, how, to, how to use sight lines and um, why they're important and why they can really help your course so um, yeah so today we're gonna be talking about basic sight lines so we're not going to dive too deep into it in the first episode you know we're, we're we're not doing anything about framing, anything about uh, like objects, um, in sight lines, um, like car paths, buildings. We're not going to talk about that stuff right now. We're just going to focus on what makes a sight line good and how you can quickly improve your sight line um, just after watching this video. So let's get into it. All right, first off, what is a sight line? Okay, so obviously it's pretty self explanatory, but we're just going to go over it real quick. Um, a sight line is the view of the hole off the tee, or an approach, but mostly I like to focus on off the tee. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, from the next part here, is a golfer's first look at the hole. You know, sight lines in the green can vary, you know what I mean? You could be in the rough, you could be in the bunker, you know what I mean? The, the, the tee, you always get the same look, and you get to decide what that look is, you know what I mean? You get to decide what the golfer sees first. Okay, next up, why are sight lines important? Okay, so sight lines give the golfer their first view of the hole. Sight lines can tell the golfer what type of hole they're playing. So here I have a couple examples of tempting drywall green at the bottom of the hill, maybe a risky blind tee shot over a long waste bunker. You know what I mean? So right here on this picture on the right, you can see all the danger is right. And the designer has highlighted that with all the bunkers there. You can see all the bunkers and you can you can you can tell he wants us to play the left, right? There's a, a big layup zone to the left, but you can also see the fairway on the other side of the bunker, which is probably the drive, the, like where you hit your driver, right? Um, and try to take on those bunkers. So it's already telling you what what like type of hole this is going to be. It's already adding some interest. You know what I mean? Um, Sight lines are important because it allows the golfer to see the danger off the tee. Like I was saying, it adds interest. You know what I mean? It you can see those bunkers. You know those are in play. You know the designer made those in play. He wants you to see them. You know he wants to to make you think. You know what I mean? And obviously, my favorite um, sight lines can be used to create beautiful views off tee boxes. Um, I love create, trying to create the most stunning views off cliffside holes and stuff like that. And, and by the end of this uh, this series, hopefully, we'll have some examples to go by to to see how to create those those uh, really cool sight lines. So before we get into some of my quick tips um, to create a sightline, we're going to talk about the biggest sightline mistakes new designers make. And I know there's, there might be a lot of um, new designers watching this, so uh, just think of your own courses, if you made a course, or if you're uh, making a course right now. Think if, if you've made any of these mistakes, because these are these are um, the things you automatically want to fix right away. And they're pretty, they're pretty simple to fix, too. So one, unintentional blindness hills or humps in the way of the whole um, or in the way of the view of the hole. Um, unintentional blindness is um, one of the biggest things uh, we see from newer designers a lot of times. You know, just just like inexperience with, with um, the land movement and stuff. And obviously a lot of the holes will be playable, but you know, a big 20 foot tall mound in, in, in the middle of the fairway just even it doesn't have to be 20 feet, even if it's like five feet tall, but it's blocking the bunker on the other side. You know, you don't want that kind of stuff. So I took a picture here. Um, I just raised up a 30 foot mound on my Cuba course on the 15th hole. And obviously it just ruins the whole hole, right? So it's framed nicely, good planting, everything, but you just can't, you can't, you don't even know what kind of hole it is, right? There's no interest off this tee rather than this is a really badly executed blind tee shot you know what I mean so here's some other examples flat sight lines where you can't see anything ahead of you 
So this is big when it comes to like people's first course. They want to create a simple course, like maybe Parkland Vibe, and their course has no elevation change, and it's just boring. Like the flat tee box just laid right in the middle of nowhere to a flat green 400 yards away, and there's just there's no you can't see any fairway or anything like that. You know what I mean? It, there's just no there's no interest. Every hole looks the same when you do that. So um, I'm going to tell you a couple of, of tips in a minute how to, to not get flat sight lines. Um, our, our, another mistake they make is blocking views of grasses and bushes and stuff like that. Um, this happens unintentionally, you know. Uh, you'd be planting, you'd be like, oh, dude, this planting looks so good. And, um, you know, you, your your grass will grow a little too tall. You know, a couple things of, a couple, like, branches of the bushes will, will stick up a bit. You want to keep your 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 view off the tee as clean as you can. Um, and, and that's, like, even here in this picture right here, I have a little bit poking up, but it's not exactly in the way. You know what I mean? You want to be able to see the whole fairway, or what you want the golfer to see. It doesn't have to be the fairway, but, you know, maybe certain parts of the fairway. You know what I mean? Um, just something to think about. So I have two examples here. So the first one on the left is... Um, uh, one of my very first courses, a really bad course that I made. Obviously, you cannot see any of the, the tee shot there. This is the first hole. Um, there's just grass poking up on in, in front. And on the right side, you can see there's like six foot tall grasses. So, you know, it just ruins the whole vibe here. Because the lighting's nice, the scenery's nice, and then you just can't see anything there. Um, the one on the right is um, like a, a test course I did it was it, it was from a long time ago and this is one of the holes there is a fairway out there but you, you can't see it at all and that's literally what every hole looks like so completely playable could be really fun to play but visually just not very pleasing okay so now we're going to talk about some of my personal quick tips to improve the quality of your sight lines okay here we go First up, raise up your tee boxes. Looking down the hole will create an easier sight line to work with. Um, so going downhill is always easier with a sight line when you're starting out, in my opinion. And we're going to talk about going uphill in, in like uh, later episodes. But um, raising up your tee boxes will give you a, a better look at the hole and give you some depth with the hole too from a higher higher viewpoint. So like I was talking about those flat um, parking courses, you can have a flat parking course. But raise your tee up a couple feet, you know what I mean? Give yourself some perspective. Give yourself some, some depth to the hole, you know what I mean? Um, don't don't just raise the whole tee box up 10 feet. Make, maybe make like a little hill and set the tee box on the hill, you know what I mean? And then it will, it will give you a better sight line there. Another thing that's huge, and most people don't think of this, but raise the lips of your bunkers. Okay, it, it doesn't sound like it will help your sight line. Like, okay, it's the bunkers. Actually, it does a ton. It makes the bunker stand out a lot more. And uh, we're going to talk, I think in the next, the next uh, thing, we're going to talk about how uh, making your bunker stand out have, um, have a big impact on your sight lines. So another thing, uh, I kind of already touched on this, but show the danger to the golfer. Do not try to hide bunkers or water hazards. Um, these can actually be used to your advantage, I think. Um, for example, bunkers can be used to frame holes and can provide a color contrast to the green of the fairway and the rough. Same thing with water. Water can can provide, um, uh, like I think the water's pretty blue in the game. It's always a little like darker than blue, but um, it provides that that contrast to the green trees, the green grass, the green fairway. You know what I mean? The same thing with the bunkers, which is why you should raise the lips of your bunkers, make them stand out. Um, don't raise them up too much, you know, just maybe a foot, you know, not 10 feet. That would be ridiculous. Um, but it, it really provides that interest out there. It provides some uniqueness to each hole. And, um, you know, you can tell the holes apart. If you can't tell the holes apart, it's usually not a good thing. You know what I mean? So, you know, use bunkers in different ways, put them in different spots, you know, higher, lower, and, um, you can create some unique sight lines. So a couple more quick tips. Um, in my opinion, uh, from my personal experience, uh, 
I think you should have the fairy bend one way. Uh, straightaway 500 yard par 4 usually doesn't have an uh, amazing sightline. And there are exceptions to this um, with some really good designers. But bending your fairway adds multiple options, first off, and provides interest to your hole. Um, you can bend them around bunkers. You can uh, bend them around water, uh, around, uh, you could, I guess you could do like rocks and stuff like that around planting and it all adds up you know to add like i said uniqueness to each hole you know what i mean you can bend them right you can bend them left you know you can snake them up a hill you can snake them down a hill you know what i mean show the golf for their options show the golf for the danger you know what i mean and um i have a couple examples of this uh coming up um here's a very very big quick tip and i'll have to explain this in more detail um if you have a very undulating course, that's actually even better. You can use different parts of fairways to be higher or lower to create variety and uniqueness to every shot. For example, there might be a low area in front of the bunker that wraps around to the high area behind the bunker. The golfer has to decide if they want to lay up or go for it. So speaking of that, I do have an example for that um, coming up from one of my own holes, um, which kind of wrote that whole point there on. Um, you know, using, using land movement, using height differences, you know, showing the, the, the golfer their, their, the layup option, the, the go for it option. Um, and talking about like the bunkers too, you making the bunkers stand out, kind of a repeating factor here or a repeating, um, um, a repeating, uh, a repeating thing that, that will really help your sidelines. So last point, don't overthink it. Okay. This is, Sometimes I get caught up in this and I have to remind myself that not every hole has to have a stunning sight line off the tee. Um, you know, I've made tons of holes that are just ho-hum sight lines, you know. I've made holes that have horrible sight lines, you know. Try to stay away from the horrible, but it's fine to have just some mediocre sight lines in the middle. You know, if your 12, 13, and 14th hole are like, just like you think, uh, the sight lines are not great, you know, it's, it's okay. And then, you know, but you know, okay, hole 16 coming up in a couple holes is an absolute stunner, you know what I mean? So keep your, keep your, keep your audience, not, not your audience, keep your, the player engaged and, until you get to the next stunning hole, you know, and then they'll, their interest will, will like, the interest will go up and, um, you know, just don't try to make every hole the best hole because when I create a course, I only have like, three to four like really good holes that i really love you know what i mean and you, you want to when you take pictures and stuff that those are the holes you select you know what i mean not every hole has to be perfect so don't try to overthink it okay so we're gonna talk um we're gonna look at some examples um, i'm gonna highlight a couple things that i like about these pictures um the first example is by me uh perk of running your own YouTube channel, you get to select your own course. Um, <laughs> this is hole number seven at my rookie competition work in progress course. And the second example is by Matt F hole one at um, Claymont Ridge. So I'm going to go to those pictures. Okay, so here we have a couple things I want to show you that I think I did pretty well. Um, Obviously, I'm not an expert at this kind of stuff, but I, I think this is a pretty good sight line here. So, first off, um, I have not put anything in the way of our site. Um, there's no grass, no bushes. I didn't I didn't plant anything in um, in this area right here, obviously, um, and I think that really helps with a with a cleaner look. Um, obviously, it's framed pretty nicely. You know, you got the trees over here, and you got the trees over here. Um, we'll talk about framing um, in the future, but Obviously, uh, really like that. Um, I've used the bunkers to my advantage here. As you can see, I've showed you what side is the danger side. Obviously, this side is this side's the danger side, and this side's the safe side, right? You you want to lay up. Um, you want to be on the left right here if you want to lay up. Um, if you want to take on those bunkers, uh, which is still kind of a layup option because it is a drivable par four. But obviously, the easiest the easiest. Um, Easiest option here is to, to hit down there. Um, the, the middle option is right there. And then you have the green way back here protected by a bunch of bunkers. And it's really tough to get there in one, um, which is what you want. But 
I'm creating this interest off the tee. Uh, I'm not blocking with anything, no hills or humps or um, grass or bushes or anything like that. I'm showing you the danger. I'm using the bunkers to my advantage to create that color contrast with the trees and the grass. And, um, you know, I'm I'm showing you the tiers. You know, this, the, this is this is the most bottom part right here, right? Second part, third part, right? It's kind of a, it's like it's like stairs. You know, you can see each um, you can see each level, right? Also, everything cambers this way, right? We'll talk about lit. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but that's really important. Um, making a sightline and making your your shot look interesting. Okay, so here's our other um, example. Um, this is a whole one at Claymont Ridge by Matt F. And um, obviously this is just a stunning view off the tee. Um, he's framed it really nicely. The backdrop is really cool. Um, we'll talk about that in future episodes. But let's talk about things that we have discussed today. Um, obviously you can see his two options here, right? This is not a drivable hole. But first off, he has allowed you to see that green. You can see where the end product is, um, or where the, the end point is, where the end product. Um, He's also, so you see his, his two options, there's one right here, and there's one over the fairway right here, right? So you can see that the land kind of runs down, so you know if you can hit it in this spot right here, you're going you're gonna to run it down a bit, you know, adding some, some interest into, into the hole. Um, obviously, he's used the bunkers to his advantage. Um, I'm going to say that a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's shown, us each, he's shown us all the bunkers, even the green bunkers you can see. And they're, they're framing the green nicely, um, they set the green up nicely, they set the hole up nicely, you know what I mean? Um, I also like, um, and I've kind of talked about this, but in a different way, um, look at the colors he's used, right? He's very like a lush green, um, tree's a little dark green. This mulch right here is kind of a, a pinkish, reddish, brownish kind of thing. Um, the bunkers are, are white, completely contrasting the the fairway adding interest and even the water coming in here adding some some uh, uniqueness to each texture you know what I mean and adding adding some interest there as well um, you can also see how he has cambered the fairway a bit everything's cambering this way you can see those hills there from the lighting um, we're gonna talk about lighting um, coming up but um, you know all this stuff blends together um, and Matt F's just he's an absolute master at, uh, at all this stuff and um, you know he, he might be the expert he might be the absolute best when it comes to sight lines okay so back to our um, presentation here so we're gonna go on to review some stuff okay so remember uh, biggest mistakes people make unintentional blindness that's one of the biggest ones um, you know, hills in the way, just flatten them down, make sure you can see the fairway, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, blocking the view with grasses, bushes, um, you know, just, you don't have to plant in front of the tee box, it's, it's fine to not, you don't have to plant anything in front of the tee box, you can't really see anything, no one looks back at the tee box, you know what I mean? Um, don't, don't worry about that, you know what I mean? Keep it clean, um, you know, uh, off the tee box, that's all, that's what I'd say. Um, some quick tips to remember, um, some, some important ones. Raise your tee boxes. Um, it will really help the depth of your hole. Um, raise the lips of your bunkers. Uh, that's A lot of people don't think that that's like a big thing in sight lines, but I'm telling you, that really helped me. And um, I've, I've heard that over and over again from a lot of top designers. Um, they've told me that kind of advice. Um, what else do we have to? What else do we go over? So, um, show the danger. Um, show bunkers. Show water. Use it to your advantage. The color contrast. You know, create your own ways. Play with your sight lines. Create different ones. You know what I mean? We're going to talk about um, creating unique sight lines in the future. But you know, hopefully, um, you gain a lot from this video and uh, you go improve your sight lines right now in the designer. So. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks for watching. Um, I think I'm going to be releasing these videos weekly um, just because they take a really long time to create the presentations for these. Plus, I have to go in and get all the screenshots and stuff, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun, and um, I, hope it, I hope it helps you guys. Um, I hope you, you see these examples and, 
and take my tips and hopefully use them. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the comments. Uh, I don't get any comments, so I will definitely see your comments if there is one there. <laughs> um, as always, guys, make sure to slap a like on the video and subscribe. Um, I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. That's the goal. Um, and look for the next episode, which is all about framing, coming out next week. So uh, I'll see you guys later.